Edina, Minnesota, my hometown. I saw lots of movies in the Edina Theater so I could escape to another world. And in that sentiment, I was in that theater in 1981 at the moment it got hit by a tornado. I'm not kidding, you can Google it. <laughs> I was with a friend. We were watching Clash of the Titans, a movie about gods at war when a tornado hit. <laughs> Not a joke, just hilarious irony. <laughs> High five, God. <laughs> Silly. A story for another time. This story starts on July 2nd, 1971, in Edina, two days before the fireworks. But the fireworks would start early that year. I was 14 years old. I know that makes me really old for Hollywood standards, but I don't care anymore. <laughs> Moving on. I was spending the night at Pat Gallagher's house with two other neighbor friends. Pat was 16 years old. He was kind of a dork, but we hung out with him anyway because he had a driver's license. <laughs> and that meant freedom and delinquent shenanigans. For example, earlier that summer, we went to a drive-in movie. It was a Clint Eastwood triple feature, a fistful of dollars for a few dollars more and the good, the bad, and the ugly. Three of us hid in the trunk of Pat's dad's car while Pat drove in and bought one ticket. Suspicious? Hell yeah. But we were dumb. Did we get caught? Of course. Two of us should have been in the car, not one. Duh. Fast forward to July 2nd. There we were, Pat Gallagher, Jim McCall, Theo Lundquist, and myself in Pat's parents' back porch. That's where we would spend the night. Much to our enjoyment, Pat's dad worked for Ham's Beer from the land of sky blue waters. That was another reason we hung out with Pat. He always had a garage full of Ham's Beer. And even though Theo was 13 years old, <laughs> I was 14, Jim was 15, and Pat was 16. We helped ourselves. His parents were oblivious. We never got too drunk, though, because it was 3-2 beer, which means 3.2% alcohol. You get full before you get drunk. <laughs> I was a jock. My dad got me into sports young, had high expectations, and never suspected me of being a delinquent. And I needed to keep it that way. Theo was the fun kid. His parents had the party house with a pool and his dad had playboys and Theo would bring some over. So as we were sitting in the porch looking at playboys pounding our hams, <laughs> beer, beer, Pat's parents were in the next room never to check up on us. Didn't care. It was a beautiful thing. My parents were a different story old school, strict, emotionally reserved Norwegians. My dad would say that he was the Norwegian who loved his wife so much, he almost told her. <laughs> hun, hun, tell, tell me you love me. Oh, for crying out loud. I told you I loved you when we got married. If anything changes, I'll let you know. My mom, the sweetest person in the world, told me once, she said, you know, Philip, I finally got your dad to go see that movie Fargo. And I mean to tell you, that was the worst movie I've seen in my life. <laughs> All that violence and the swearing and, you know, I think they were making fun of Minnesotans. <laughs> I digress, back to story. We were underage drinking in Pat's back porch and if my dad knew we were drinking, he would ground me for life and that would be unpleasant. As we were enjoying the official beer of the Minnesota Twins, we contemplated what to do on the 4th of July. Of course, fireworks is on the top of the list. They always had a great fireworks display in my hometown, but we wanted our own. The problem is, Fireworks are illegal in Minnesota. All you can buy are snakes and sparklers, the two most boring mamby-pamby fireworks ever. 
We were way too old for snakes and sparklers. We needed the big stuff. We needed awesome fireworks that would soar into the sky. We, we needed bottle rockets, Roman candles, stuff we could shoot at each other. <laughs> How cool would it be if we put on a big fireworks display in our neighborhood? We would be gods, not necessarily with our parents, but definitely with our friends. But where would we get the fireworks? Well, we could buy them from Jeff Carter, the local thug slash bully slash fireworks dealer. But he, he would mark them up so high they would cost a fortune. Plus, he's an a-hole. So we thought, let's go to the source, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. There's a big fireworks factory there where you can buy them wholesale. You can buy a gross of black cat bottle rockets for $1.50. That's 144 bottle rockets for $1.50. <laughs> we go to Sioux Falls, buy a ton of fireworks, come back, sell half of them for a fortune, light off the other half, and we'll be legends. It's a no-brainer, and we lack the brains to prove it. <laughs> Wait, how far away is Sioux Falls? 231 miles there, 462 miles round trip. Whoa. That's, that's really far away. That's like a day trip. How are we going to pull that off? And then Pat had a brilliant idea. Let's go tonight. Say what now? <laughs> we'll take Dad's car. We'll leave at 11 when my parents are asleep. It'll take us eight hours to get there, buy the fireworks, and get back. We'll be back before they're awake. They'll never know. Brilliant. So the factory is open all night? No. It's a gas, it's not a gas station, it's a business. It opens in the morning. Okay, plan B. We'll leave at four in the morning, get there when it opens, buy the fireworks, then drive back. We'll be back by noon. Well, what about your parents? We'll leave a note. <laughs> saying what? We, we got up early, took the car, went golfing, and we'll be back at noon. Brilliant. How much money do we have? Well, I, I caddied for money in those days, and I had about $40, so I was flush. <laughs> the other guys had some money, so we were all set. Okay, wait. How much is gas? Well, we need to leave the, the tank at the same level. Okay, is there water somewhere? <laughs> Just a little bit of water. Sorry about that. I didn't touch it. Okay. Thanks. Thanks so much. Wow. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so Pat's, um, okay, how much gas, is, uh, how much is gas? Okay, we need to leave the tank at the same level. Okay, gas is 36 cents a gallon. 462 miles, 15 miles to the gallon, that's $11 for gas. Split four ways, $2.75 each. We can do it. Wait, won't Pat's dad know we put 462 miles on the car? Three of us felt that was a risk that Pat needed to take. <laughs> what, what if we get in a car accident? Well, then we're screwed. Wait, isn't it a crime for minors to cross the state line, buy fireworks, then sell them illegally in Minnesota? Is something we never considered. The stakes were high for me. If my dad found out, he'd send me to military school. But I felt I needed to do it for no particular reason. <laughs> so at four in the morning, we pushed Pat's dad's car down the driveway. We didn't start the car until we got down the street so they wouldn't hear it and wake up. And off we went to Sioux Falls, South Dakota, crossing our fingers we wouldn't hit a deer. About two hours into the trip, the windshield was covered with hundreds of dead bugs, making it impossible to see. Not a problem if you have windshield wiper fluid, but we didn't. <laughs> Pat had to pull over in the middle of nowhere. He got out of the car, crawled on the hood, careful not to dent it, and kneeling on the hood, he peed on the windshield. Oh. 
Unfor un unfortunately, the moment I turned on the windshield wipers, Theo was standing next to the car and got doused by a face full of bug whiz. The risks you take. When the windshield was clean, we got back in the car, but before driving off, realized someone was missing. <laughs> Suddenly, we hear something strange. We got out to find Jim on the ground behind the trunk, tossing pebbles on the car. He was hammered. Jim wore glasses. <laughs> he was a nerd, but that morning, that nerd had five three-two beers, and he proved to us that he could not handle alcohol. <laughs> Stereotype confirmed. We got Jim back in the car and off we went. For some miraculous reason, we made it to Sioux Falls, bought several grocery bags of fireworks, the good stuff, and brought them back to Edina, Minnesota. We sold half of them for big money and lit off the other half on the 4th of July. We were heroes. Pat's parents didn't know. They didn't notice the extra 462 miles on the car. Pat actually took the car to an empty parking lot and drove it backwards for a half hour to take miles off it before he just gave up. It didn't matter. His parents were oblivious. Now, maybe Pat's parents were oblivious and didn't care, but I didn't want to go to military school. So we made a pact to not tell anyone about our trip to Sioux Falls. I mean, people would know that we had fireworks, but they wouldn't know how we got them. And I'm not one of those guys where Hey, I promise I won't tell anyone. And I'll tell my friends not to tell anyone. No, no, I didn't tell anyone. But all the neighbors found out we went to Sioux Falls. Someone squealed. Probably Theo. His parents would love that story and they would brag about it. Hey, listen to what my son just did. Okay. Yeah, and my parents found out too. I know that because my brother told me. And my, mom and dad know you went to Sioux Falls. I didn't even tell him. I thought for sure I was on my way to boot camp. But my parents never said anything to me about it, ever. Maybe they were too ashamed. Maybe they were secretly impressed. <laughs> yeah. I don't know the answer because they never brought it up. But their silent punishment was devastating. Just yell and get it over with. Nothing. They just went about their day like nothing happened. Pure evil. <laughs> it was then that I realized my parents were kind of cool. <laughs> they didn't have to tell me I was an idiot. I knew I was. <laughs> I mean, we could have gotten killed or worse. And thankfully, I learned my lesson, got through my stupidity phase and lived to tell about it so I could pass my wisdom on to future generations. <laughs> yeah, I didn't do that last part, obviously. <laughs> Everything else, yeah. <laughs>